Hey everyone, how are you doing? Welcome to a new tutorial which is about using Codebox in JITGEN. Probably a lot of you already work with JITGEN to create uh, matrices uh, to work with uh, OpenGL objects or just simply to modify videos or images or you work with GGL pics as well but you mostly use JITGEN um, working with graphical objects because you were not exposed yet to the marvelous world of Codebox. So in this video series we are going to see just that. So this is a little patch which uh, simply has a movie player, um, a JIT noise that produces random numbers in a matrix 320 by 240 and if I double click on the JIT gen this is how it looks by default. So first let's see what is a code box object. So instead of this plus I'm just going to replace it with the code box object. So when I write the word code box inside the new object, inside the JIT gen, or inside every gen object, I get this um, interface, which allows us to write uh, the same gen code that we will create using a graphical representation of objects, but instead we use a text representation of those objects. So we are actually writing code. And the language used for code box is called uh, gen, it's very similar to C actually. And first of all, I want to show you what is the advantage on actually using the uh, code box instead of simply working with the graphical representation of objects. I find that the main advantage is readability. So let's make an example. So let's say that I create a variable called the final color and a variable in code box is simply a container for whatever number of data I want to put inside it. So I will assign it by default to input1, which means input1 is the input that comes in the first inlet of the code box object, while input2 is the input that comes in the second inlet. By default, as you can see, uh, the algorithm is simply summing together input1 and input2 and sending it out to output1, which is the first outlet. Perfect. So let's say that instead of the sum of the two inputs, I want to send out uh, the variable final color which I've just created. And this will simply be the input one because I have assigned it to be equal to the input one. Um, let's now say that I want, so let's actually write it down. We can also create comments in Codebox, where, which is basically just a line of text that is not interpreted by the computer. It doesn't mean anything for it, it's going to skip it, it's just for us to put notes. So I want that if the values in the first plane of the matrix coming in the second input are greater than 0.5, then output uh, the input 2, otherwise output input 1. Okay, so let's see how we can create this algorithm in Codebox. So it will work something like this. If in2.x is greater than 0 0.5, this is the number that I decided to check against, then final color is equal to input 2. Super uh, very easy and very immediate. As you can see now Codebox has a second input to which I connected my input 2 which represents the matrices coming in uh, in the second input of JITGEN. So this is checking if the value in the first plane of JIT noise is greater than 0 0.5. Now this is of type char, this matrix of noise that I've created is of type char. So if I were to create a JIT.cell block you will see that the values inside this noise range between 0 and 255, but as you probably know, in JITGEN everything gets transformed into the range 0 to 1. So in this case we have to rescale basically the range 0 to 255 from 0 to 1. So we can see that in this case the first pixel here on the top left will not be greater than 0 0.5, and so it's outputting the input 1. So if this condition is true, then our final color is not equal anymore to input 1, so the video, but is equal to input 2, so the noise. And so you can see that uh, uh, sometimes we add the pixels from the second matrix, so the noise, and sometimes we add the pixels uh, from the video. And these parentheses here simply mean uh, this is the scope of this if. So everything that happens inside this graph parentheses um, happens if this condition is true. Everything that is outside happens by default. So let's now recreate the simple algorithm with max uh, with gen uh, graphical objects instead of with code. So let's do like this. 
Let's recreate actually in one, in two. So we want to switch the first component, the first plane of the noise. So we have to use the switch X, which we didn't have to do in Codebox because we could just say dot X. Uh, because in Codebox, uh, we can access uh, components of a vector using this dot uh, syntax. So we can just say uh, dot X means give us the first plane of this vector. In this case, the vector is represented by the colors in the cell of the matrix. So if this is greater than 0 0.5, and then we could use um, a question mark operator, which means uh, if this is true, then output everything that comes in this middle input. If this is false, output everything that comes in the, se uh, in the third inlet, and this will be exactly the same. But I find that it's, it's much more difficult to read what is going on here at the first glance than to read the, um, the same code in Codebox. This makes it much easier to understand it, in my humble opinion. And especially for large algorithms, you will need a big amount of graphical gen objects, and this will very fast uh, uh, become a mess, while in Codebox you can keep your code pretty much organized. Good. So this is all for this first video. I don't want to put too many things in your head. And in the next one, we are going to see a bit more properties of how to write stuff in Codebox. If you have some comments on what you saw, uh, please uh, leave them down in this video. Also click the like button and uh, subscribe to the channel. This actually helps me very much going on with the channel. So thank you very much for following. Uh, you can check my website for all my video tutorials, check my Patreon for the patches, and I will see you soon in the next video. Ciao.